<laughs> okay. Woo. Hello. Hi everyone. Little bit of a chaotic day. My name's Carrie. Welcome to the video. <laughs> Thank you for being here. There's this strange storm going on outside. It's okay. Well, the second I said storm, that's weird. It started snowing. It was raining. Now it's snowing, but the wind is absolutely insane. If you hear any kind of big like whooshing sound, I'm right next to my window, but now it looks calmer. So hopefully it doesn't bother our video. Anyway, so we're just having a nice little sit down video today. Um, I did a Q&A about my work a couple weeks ago and I got a bunch of questions that were like, are you gonna do a Q&A for just random stuff? So I realized I haven't done one in a while. Here I am, opened it up. When did I? ask for these questions. Hold on. Okay, it's been a month <laughs> since I've asked you for these questions, so sorry that I've been sitting on them for so long. I think this is a cute little list of questions. Um, hopefully we can start some interesting conversations in the comment section. And as the slush comes down, <laughs> the weirdest weather outside, let's just begin. I've got coffee, I've got snacks, hope you do too, some kind of beverage. P please hydrate. That's something that I didn't do last week. This weekend I was feeling weirdly just like out of it. And then I chugged water and wouldn't you know it, I felt great, I was dehydrated. As I feel like probably most of you are. So go have a sip of water, not any other kind of beverage. Drink some H2O for me, okay? Before we get started, super quick shout out to the sponsor of this video who makes videos like this possible, and that would be Squarespace, who you know and love. Squarespace is a place where you can host your online presence. I use it for a blog, been using it for years, but they also have features like comment sections, email lists, a great analytics section. They have ways to connect your social media accounts, but they also have ways to add monetization features if you're trying to start a shop or anything like that this year. Highly recommend them. They have free templates that are so easy to use that you can set up a really professional looking website in a couple hours, depending on how much you want to go into it. It could be minutes. Highly, highly recommend Squarespace. If you want to right now, you can go to squarespace.com and play around with the free templates and all of the features for free. And then when you're ready to launch it to the public, you can go to squarespace.com slash carrycakes to get 10% off of your first website or domain, carrycakes.net as an example is linked down below. Yeah, just thank you so much as always to Squarespace for sponsoring this. But now to dive in, actually a lot of the questions I got, um, I, I guess because I haven't done this in a while, I got a lot of questions that were very basic life stuff. So um, in case you are new to the channel, I'm just basically gonna reintroduce myself. <laughs> so there will be timestamps <laughs> in the description box if you wanna skip this, but yeah, my name is Carrie. Hi. Um, I am originally from San Diego, California. I went to university in New York. Most of my family is on the East Coast actually, so I moved there. I really thought that was like, I was gonna go to college, graduate, get a job there, live there the rest of my life. But I studied abroad my junior year here in Seoul. I went through the CIEE program, which I highly recommend, amazing. So yeah, I studied here for a full year. During that time, I got an internship. I worked for YG Entertainment for a semester. The next semester I really just spent exploring all of Korea and making friends and it was amazing and because of that I really wanted to come back. So after I went back for my senior year, graduated, and then I got a job as a marketing slash community manager at a social media company and I worked there for five years, <laughs> five and a half years actually. That is where I met my husband Kurt who you might see floating around in some of my videos. We got married. I feel like I got a comment literally like three days ago that was like, whoa, I missed the fact that you got married. Like, when did that happen? I was like five years ago. <laughs> and so yeah, I've been living here technically since 2014. Um, I was a student 2012 to 2013. I've been doing this full time um, since 20, the end of 2019. My main passion is travel and encouraging people to travel, specifically solo traveling and seeing parts of Korea that are outside of Seoul and things like that. After 2020, everybody's lives kind of changed and I've become a little bit more of a homebody. Um, so I still try to encourage solo travel and things like that, but hopefully this year I will be able to get out of Seoul a bit more and get back into my traveling era. What else? I have a dog named Louie. I'm an only child, but I've always had fur siblings. Um, and so I have Louie, who is everyone's favorite dog. <laughs> That's all. I think the rest I will cover in this 
Q&A. But that's me. Thanks for your interest. <laughs> Next up, absolutely the most common question I got in various different forms, but it essentially boils down to what are my thoughts and feelings on moving to the US? Will I be moving to the US? Where will we be moving, etc. So yes, my husband and I have always planned to move to the US. Definitely a couple years ago, I wasn't quite ready to leave Korea, but I feel like now I'm really good. Like I'm I'm good to go. I've I've hit a point where I've realized that I really will be happy anywhere. I think that there definitely will be a lot of reverse culture shock just because of how my life has shifted a little bit um, in terms of, I don't know, my interests, my speed. I don't know how to explain it, but like even just a couple years ago, I was such like a go, 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 go person. I needed to be out of the house and doing something every single day. But now I'm, I'm a lot more okay with a slower pace. And so I'm kind of of the mindset that as long as I am near a grocery store, a cafe, a book store, and a park, or like nature, I can do it. I can deal with pretty much anything. I can be anywhere. So Kurt is really pushing for the West Coast. As much as we have shown him the beauty of the East Coast, I'm really sorry to the Midwest and like all the middle bits. I just don't know you. <laughs> I made the mistake of introducing Kurt to San Diego when I still lived there, like my family still lived there. It really is paradise. He's really not a fan of extreme heat or extreme cold, which Korea has both of them. He's just sort of like, why on earth would I move somewhere that still has winter when I have the option to move somewhere that doesn't have winter. And so he's really pushing for San Diego. I'm honestly not mad about that at all. Um, I, I was for a while. I was sort of like, no, I'm not going back to my hometown. The more that I think about it, um, the more comfortable I am with that move. Also, I'd like to be closer to my parents, but my parents also would love an excuse to come out to San Diego in the winter and have a place to stay. So yeah, we still don't know. Um, this is still like at least two to three years in the future, but yeah, we are planning on moving to the US. I definitely know that I'm gonna have like very sad moments. It's gonna be very different. I think as long as I'm mentally preparing myself for a few years, we'll be good. It's happening, it will, but probably within two to three years. Next up, I'm actually gonna cut to the future. Some Somebody asked about my MBTI. I've tested myself like three or four times and I always get the same INFJ, always, which is allegedly the most rare, but I feel like everybody in my comment section is an INFJ. So I haven't taken it in at least a year so I'm going to, in the future, right after I finish filming this, go take it and we'll see what that is. So get ready to time travel. Bye. <laughs> Hi, we begin. I am taking it on the 16personalities.com, which is where I think I've always taken it. I'm scared. After a long, exhausting week, a lively social event is just what you need. No. Okay, here we go. See results. INFJ slash T advocates are quiet visionaries, often serving as inspiring and tireless idealists. 72% introverted. I don't remember what I was last time. 81% intuitive, 75% feeling, 79% judging, 58% turbulent. Turbulent individuals are self-conscious and sensitive to stress. They feel a sense of urgency in their emotions and tend to be success-driven, perfectionistic, and eager to improve. Oh, okay. That's a me. Uh, I'll show you. I feel like I was the other one. Thought I used to be A. But yeah, there I am. I thought I was this man. So unless they changed it, I thought I was the old man, not the green-haired woman. But okay. Are they putting that child into a coffin? What is this image? Okay. Well, anyway, so that's what I am. I'm still INFJ. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome back to the past. I wonder what I was. <laughs> Victoria came in asking about snacks, <laughs> which I thought was just such a random funny question. And I actually do have a favorite snack right now. I go through phases where I just eat the same food for like months, as you have seen with my yogurt. <laughs> but currently my kick is cashews. I got this bag, I don't know, it's been a couple weeks. Sorry, it hasn't, I haven't devoured this bag as quickly as I thought I would. I just sometimes, crave a good cashew. I have another one of these bags. They were one plus one. How silly, my camera cut me off mid cashew rant. Anyway, yeah, I just, I just, 
love a good cashew right now is what I'm what I'm dealing with. They're so yummy. So that's been my go-to snack, Victoria, in case you're wondering. But I have a hot take because I've gotten a couple people asking for like tongue hulu content and my hot take is I hate tongue hulu. So tongue hulu is basically fruit on a stick, fresh fruit on a stick covered in sugar so that it becomes hard, like a hard candy layer outside so you bite into it and when you bite into it it's that crunch of a hard candy as if you were biting into like a jolly rancher or something and then it immediately becomes the squishy juiciness of a fresh fruit i just hate that combination of texture and i would just rather eat the fresh fruit like why would i want a gorgeous perfect fresh strawberry covered in hard sugar. I don't know. I've had it once in my life. Thank you Keiko for the experience, but I just, I just don't like Tang Hu. I don't like it. <laughs> so yeah, that's my, my snack recommendation and my anti-snack recommendation. And so if you also don't like Tang Hu, I feel like I haven't seen people say anything negative about it. We are few, but we are, you're not alone. Okay. Not a fan. Not a fan. <laughs> I got a couple questions about my driver's license because I posted about it. It's been a little over a year. Oh, that's what I wanted to check actually is if it expired. Where is it? Hold on, let me find it. It doesn't say when I got it. Oh, April 27th, 2022. So I got it about almost two years ago. Have I ever used it? No. So yeah, I did get it. I took the classes and took the tests and all that stuff. It's a 10 year driver's license. I have this until 2032. Oh my god, the weather is just so scary outside. So yeah, I do have my driver's license. Um, I'm just really, I don't even like driving in America. Um, and so to drive in Korea where I feel like, I feel like drivers in cities especially, it's just not good anywhere. Like I wouldn't want to drive in New York either kind of thing. Even downtown San Diego is a mess. Um, so partially it's because of Seoul driving in a city bad but even while i was taking my driving test and like my driving classes i was kind of freaked out by the quality of the test and the questions because so much of the class and so much of the questions that were asked in order to get my driver's license were about not the rules of the road but about like how much are you going to be fined if you get a DUI? Or how much are you going to be fined if you park in the wrong place? They also just have different rules than in the US. Like literally in my driving, we had to do like you're on a course and you have to go through the course like a million times because the driving class is actually done by a computer. Like you get in a very specific car with a computer in it and the computer tells you what to do. And so you have to kind of learn how to understand the computer it's very bizarre and in one part you get an emergency alert there's an alarm and then you have to slam on your brakes and immediately put on your emergency lights and the first time i did it i i stopped quickly but like i didn't want to slam my instructor is in the passenger seat he's an old man i'm not going to throw him through the the window right so i stopped quickly but not like <sighs> right? And he said, no, you would have lost points on that. You need to slam on those brakes. I'm like, what if someone's directly behind? Like, there's just so many things that like you study to pass the test. You don't study to drive well. And that really kind of freaked me out even more. So I'm not interested. Perhaps if we were to go to like Jeju or something, I might rent a car, but overall I didn't like driving in America. Don't plan on driving here. So I have it just like in case of emergencies, but that's gonna be collecting dust in my wallet for 10 years, <laughs> I assume. Okay, a couple questions about any tips on getting out of your comfort zone? How do you get over your fear of going to coffee shops and reading alone, etc.? In terms of going and doing things by yourself, I've never felt super weird about that. I think the only one that still gets me sometimes, and I can't pinpoint why, it only happens occasionally, but I still don't love eating alone. But for the most part, I'm totally fine doing things alone. And I think maybe that's an only child thing. Like I don't, I'm, I've never been like codependent or anything like that. So I enjoy being by myself. So I don't really have tips for that, but I do know like if you are afraid, guaranteed when you are sitting alone in a cafe reading either one of two things happen one no one notices you 
or they do and they just forget about you. Two, they think, who is that really cool person reading a book in a cafe? The worst thing that's gonna happen is people don't notice you, which is not a bad thing at all, actually. And the best thing is people are like, damn, she's cool. Next, you know? So it's really not, um, in terms of like personal safety, I think you have to gauge that for yourself wherever you live. But if you're just worried about people looking at you alone, no. And then in terms of um, just getting out of your comfort zone, I read this in a book recently and I wish I remember which book I read this in. Mm. But anyway, the quote is basically like, the only one who knows you're not confident is you. If you go to a coffee shop by yourself and you feel like you're so nervous and oh my god, I must look so nervous, no one knows that. Like, no one can hear the thoughts in your head no one knows that you're quaking in your boots a little bit. If you just look confident, act confident, fake it till you make it, you will start to feel more confident. The only person that you need to convince is yourself. And that's like the hardest thing to do, obviously. And also just kind of know yourself and what, how you can tiptoe out of the comfort zone. Don't just like cannonball. For me, like I really wanted to get back into Pilates but I knew that I felt really nervous about a group class, so I started doing a one-on-one -on -one class, and now I, I'm confident in my strength and understanding of Pilates that I could very happily go to a group class now. Whereas if I went from point A to point C, it would have been maybe uncomfortable for me and I would have given up. Um, so also think about that, like how can you kind of leapfrog your way <laughs> into comfort? I think you'll, you'll be pleasantly surprised with what you can do. A couple questions about this, like if I wasn't doing content creation, what kind of job would I be doing? Or what would life be like if I didn't go to Korea immediately after post-grad? Ooh, so if I wasn't doing content creation, I would most likely still be doing content creation. Um, I was very much in the pipeline anyway of going into social media marketing. Um, would I have been intensely happy with that? Mm. Mm, I think I would have been okay. But yeah, I think I probably would have just followed that path of marketing, which nowadays so heavily relies on social media, so I would probably be making content for a company in some way. If I didn't come to Korea post-grad, I would be living in New York, working at a company and I feel like I would have always had Korea in my mind like I'm very much a person who gets comfortable quickly so if I had stayed in the US after graduation and and got a job I'm not the kind of person who would like I quit my nine to five and I moved to Korea like that's not <laughs> not me um, especially not in my early 20s so if I didn't go to Korea post-grad I wouldn't have come back to Korea to live no way. So I'm I'm very glad that I did it. Um, I feel like I would have found a way and like made my own happiness in that, you know, alternative universe, but I'm very happy with where I am now. <laughs> Next up, differences between solo travel and couple travel or group travel. They're just, they're just very different. Like solo travel, I feel like I pay attention to details more. I'm so hyper aware of my surroundings and I really find quiet time to like just soak things in and I'm deep in my thoughts having my inner monologue going that I just end up kind of having like mini breakthroughs or I find that I'm really creatively inspired. Yeah, I just feel like when I'm when I'm traveling I'm much more connected not only to myself but to my surroundings and then when I'm traveling with a group or with, you know, one person or more, it's more about my experiences with them. Like, am I having fun with my friends? That's kind of the difference. I did my first real group trip last year. Um, I went to Japan with a bunch of you guys, and then I went to Iceland, and it was so different and so fun. Even though we had this backdrop of really wonderful places, it was also just so hilariously fun to talk to everybody. I just, yeah, I had a really great time. I was never one for like a tour group, but I've kind of had my mind changed. Then in terms of like couple travel, Kurt has a very different traveling style than I do. I'm kind of the person that if I'm going somewhere new for a short time, I want to have kind of an itinerary so that like I hit the places I really want to see and Kurt is very much like 
no plan. Sometimes that's really great. Sometimes it's not because like we go somewhere and things are closed that day or you know oh we didn't get to go see this thing because we ran out of time. So we kind of when we travel we meet in the middle where I have a couple things I really want to do and so I'll be like okay this day like let's make sure we hit this spot but other than that like let's just wander and that's worked really well I think for both of us. It's got a lot of benefits but this trip we're actually at the end of this week we're heading to Tokyo. Actually while you're watching this I'm in Tokyo so you can check my Instagram see what we're doing but I've been to Tokyo so many times and I really want Kurt to love it so I am totally hands-off I booked the hotel that's it and he's he's in charge I'm just gonna follow him around because I'll be happy anywhere like anywhere we go um, as long as we stop in a kombini a couple times to get me an onigiri I'm a happy camper so um, this is truly gonna be a Kurt trip which is I'm interested to see how it goes. We do have reservations one day because we really want really good unagi. We both really love eel. But other than that, wandering. So it should be fun. I will be kind of vlogging it, but because it's like Kurt style, I don't know how much I'm gonna film, you know? So we'll see. But yeah, I love traveling in all forms. It really depends on like what's your goal, what you wanna get out of your trip, I think, so. And then following that, um, questions about marital conflicts how do we fight how do we solve our fights so like i said we've been married for five years we've been dating for almost 10 years we've been friends for definitely 10 years and so i feel like any of our arguments nowadays are very much similar to the same kind of arguments i had when i was living with my friends like someone that you love and care for but if you just stay with them 24 7 sometimes you're in a bad mood sometimes they're in a bad mood you get a little cranky you know i'm sure you guys have like bickered with your friends a little bit that's kind of what we do but we're also just really aware of how the other person works and so i will always like if i am feeling prickly i will start my like complaints or my you know whatever i'm bothered with as like i'm feeling really prickly today i'm just in a bad mood but <laughs> so that he knows he's like oh, okay so you're gonna be over this in like two minutes and I'm like yeah I just needed to say it out loud he's like okay <laughs> Kurt's very just like chill um Kurt's really logical too I'm a much more emotional person he's much more logical so sometimes we butt heads with that but we just really communicate I think it's partially that we are aware of our partner um but we're also very aware of ourselves and so we will like I said preface things with like I'm just feeling a little bit stressed like the second you let them know how you're feeling that usually helps i believe in one of the questions about this it was asking about like small living in a small space and i just had a friend who asked me a similar question because she's moving in with her partner and one thing that i learned first of all like kurt and i we live in a one we've lived in a one room apartment together for five years no problems with space the only issues we have is like sometimes kurt works late hours and i want to go to sleep but one thing that I learned that's very important is that I work from home and I work for myself so a lot of times I am alone all day and when Kurt comes home I'm like oh yay friend I get to play but poor Kurt works in an office and he's had meetings all day and he's been talking to people all day he hasn't had any alone time so that's one big thing that we learned early is like Kurt needs his time we're both introverts and so like I've had my quiet time by myself. He needs his to like recharge for like an hour or something after dinner. Like he plays video games, I'm reading my book, but we like, I give him his space, you know? I can't even remember the last time we like actually got angry. We were never like, for me, that's a big red flag. Like if people have like yelling fights, I, I feel like a relationship would have never survived that. Like I would have pulled the plug real quick because I don't like that. Um, so I don't even know. Oh, we do argue about how to deal with our noisy neighbors. Kurt is a big fan of like hammering back at them. Like if they make noise, we make noise. And I'm a big fan of either calling our security guard or you're not supposed to do this, but I'm also a big fan of knocking on their doors and like letting them see like there's a human on the other side of the wall. Let's be kind to each other, okay? I'm a big fan of that and he's always like that never works and I'm like well your hammering doesn't work so like neither of our situations work and neither of them make us feel better so we just Ugh. but then we end up laughing like it's so silly and so frustrating I think that's the that's the main thing we've been 
arguing about lately. <laughs> okay, very last questions. This one um, was about, is the publishing industry like the fast fashion industry? This is a conversation that's been going on in the book community a lot, and I actually wrote it down. I wrote down notes. What did I say? I said, <laughs> past me, I think that every era we have a moral panic about things, and it's never actually that big of a deal. For example, auto-tune is ruining music, but here we are with a revival of a very raw live sound, what, 20 years later, right? Um, or Penny Dreadfuls, or ebooks, or so many things. I think that literature will survive this current fad. Um, and then I also was like, comparing it with fast fashion, which is killing humans and our planet, not the move. So I get what people mean when they're saying the publishing industry is like fast fashion because publishing houses are now just turning out books. They're trying so hard to get people to buy a ton of books. They're making like a bunch of special edition physical books that you want to get with exclusive content and like pretty sprayed edges and new covers and also like pushing authors to produce faster, which means the books are usually worse quality. I get it. I just don't think comparing it to fast fashion is like <laughs> great. And like I said, I think we always get these kind of moral panics about whatever is going on in like the arts. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think, I think, yeah, sure, we'll get some crappy books for sure. But I also think that will still get great books and it's our responsibility to support those great books, support your library, support your bookshops. Um, so I don't think it's like as big of a deal as people are making it. Maybe you could let, I'm also like not hugely involved in the conversation so maybe you could let me know more in the comments but I agree that it's a problem. I agree that I have had a series that I know and love be ruined by the quick the fast pace of the publishing industry right now. So I do have a bone to pick, I do. But I don't think it's the level of fast fashion in any way, shape, or form. And then the last question was about what's my favorite book at the moment? Oh God. I did make a video about my favorite books of 2023. So I'll link that down below. But just recently, I literally just finished The Library at Mount Char. The weirdest reading experience because the lead, the main character, is named Carolyn, which is my full name, which I don't use often and I never hear it. Like I don't know anyone in my life named Carolyn. It's really rare to see people named Carolyn nowadays. I like when I think of Carolyn, I only think of myself. So reading this book and she's like murders more than one person in this book, let's just say. It was a very bizarre experience, but I would say if you liked, this is kind of niche, but if you liked the locked tomb, specifically Nona the Ninth, if you know what I'm talking about, you would like library at Mount Char. And that's all I can really say. I'm currently also reading The Square of Sevens, which is a historical fiction dealing with like fortune telling in the 1700s in London, which has been London and Bath, which has been quite fun. And then in terms of just like other favorites, hold on for one second. I'm gonna go collect some things I want to tell you about. <laughs> General recent favorites of the year currently, things I love, okay? my noise canceling headphones. I talked to you guys about it <laughs> in the past like five videos. I'm sorry. These are the Bose Quiet Comfort 45. Kurt and I had the Bose Quiet Comfort 35. We had them for like at least four years maybe. Kurt used them. I never did. I was always kind of uncomfortable with noise canceling because I like to hear things going on. But then we had a coupon. We had a gift card for Shinsege. Um, so we actually got these for free <laughs> basically. And I was like, yeah, this is the time. Like what else are we going to buy at the Shinsege Bikwaj? I'm like, Pfft. so we got these right before my flight to the US for Christmas. Life changed. I put these on, put on the noise canceling for the entire flight. I had them on and not only on, but on and playing music. I put on like a very gentle, I'll link it down below actually. It's a really great ambient playlist, but I just had that on. I think the battery, it was like a 13, 14 hour flight. I think the battery only went down to like 75% actively using it the whole time. I felt so much less anxious. I felt like I was on a bus, like instead of an airplane, it felt really like I was just falling asleep on a bus. Can't recommend them enough. Bose Quiet Comfort. <laughs> Next up, actually today. Today marks the one year and three day anniversary of me getting my Kindle Paperwhite once again life changed. I was so aggressively a physical book reader. 
until I moved to Korea. The English book section of libraries here just isn't as stocked as I'd want it to be. And then in terms of the bookstores here, books are expensive and a lot of times they only, they've gotten so much better in the past couple of years, but it was very much like you could find the classics and then you could find the like best sellers. It very much felt like a airport bookstore, that vibe was the books you were gonna find. And so I switched in 2020, I switched to using my iPad and using Libby, which is an online, it, now it's just Overdrive, or now it's just Libby, right? It used to be Overdrive and Libby, now it's just Libby. Libby is a digital library, so your home library will join Libby, and so you can just borrow books, audiobooks, put them on hold, etc. through Libby, and you can get the eBooks. Absolutely changed my life, but my iPad, the screen was quite harsh my ipad's a little bit heavy i got that in 2016 um the battery life wasn't that great so i got the paper white it weighs less than a book it has an incredible battery life the screen feels like paper so it really doesn't bother my eyes at all my forever favorite but just celebrating its birthday today kindle paperweight and then just really quick uh some beauty skincare stuff that I've I really loved. This is a brand new bottle because I just had to buy another one. Redheads. This is called Gingerful. It is a brand that makes shampoo and conditioners but now a hair mask specifically formulated for red hair so it does contain the tiniest bit of henna. I've seen other shampoos that are like for enhancing red hair and it to me really seems to change that person's hair color which is what i don't want but this just kind of adds a nice little shine to my hair like i don't feel like it changes the color of my hair it just kind of like makes it look healthier this is henna and rose but i believe it also has like carrot and coconut and ginger so it smells amazing um, I've been using this for a really long time. This was not gifted. They have sent me a gift before, but this is purchased with my own money. And I bought my first one with my own money as well. And then last but not least, something I get asked a lot is about my lip color. I'm actually not wearing this today. I'm wearing, I'll put it down below, but um, this is from Hints. Heinz? Hints. They have a lip gloss or something. But what I always have in my bag, which I swear by, is the Burt's Bees Tinted Lip Balm in the color Red Dog. Dahlia. I haven't opened this one. I literally just bought a new package, um, but it's just a very wonderful shade. And so if you're asking if I'm like out and about and I have a lip color looking thing on my lips, um, it's this for sure. So that's literally like the most important things in my life right now are my headphones, my Kindle, my chapstick. That's all. <laughs> So I hope that answered a lot of your questions. I still need to go take my MBTI test. Anyway, just thanks for being here. Um, welcome to the new year. And yeah, I'm just always very thankful that you're here. So I will let you guys go. Once again, thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this. Uh, everything will be linked down below, but you can go to squarespace.com slash carrycakes to get 10% off of your first website or domain. My voice is going. Um, thank you always to Squarespace for supporting this channel. I will catch you guys next time. If you have more questions, let me know down below. Um, and if not, I have other Q and A's that you can peruse. So I will catch you guys next time when we are in Japan and see you then. Okay. Bye. Oh, if I, I hear the best one.